Saddam Hussein surrenders to UN demands. He will allow weapons inspectors back into Iraq, but President Bush is still skeptical. We will not tolerate any deception, denial, or deceit, period. Also tonight, spotting dangerous conditions at local nursing homes. If it were my first time to go into one, I would put a lot of stock in uh, their grading process. We'll arm you with information to help protect your loved ones. This is News 3 at 5 with Jim Snyder and Nina Raditich. Good evening, everyone. We'll have the latest on the high-stakes game of cat and mouse with a rock in just a minute. But first, it's the master plan to keep your kids in school, police on the streets, and traffic running smoothly. But it's going to cost you. Today, we learned exactly how much more you'll be paying for movies, cigarettes, or your home if a new proposal by the governor's task force on tax policy gets approved. Dana Wagner has been following the story. He joins us now with today's developments. Dana? Here's the executive summary from the committee. The biggest hit will come to big business. Their revenues could be taxed for the first time to help close an estimated $700 million state budget gap. But the little guy will have to pay, too, which isn't sitting well with some. I don't like it. I don't like a thing about it. The committee got an earful from John Q. Public. Hunger for our tax funds is insatiable. They're going to keep on coming back and coming back and coming back. They're probably right. Committee member Luther Mack understands what they're saying about taxes, but he says it's worth it. I personally think that I, as a businessman, are uh, glad to pay these taxes because I enjoy living in the state of Nevada. Here are some of the proposals being recommended by the committee. Cigarettes would go up 35 cents a pack. The cost of liquor would also go up, for instance, about a nickel on a six pack. The property tax would increase about $52 on a $100,000 home. The amusement tax would increase the cost of a movie by 50 cents. And the biggie, the business tax on gross receipts would cost the owner of a million dollar company about $625 a year. Critics say the state will get a bigger pay raise than the average citizen. Consider the proposals being made represent at least a 30% increase in the revenue to government. This at a period of time when the average private sector worker in Nevada has seen their income rise by 2.3 or 2.4%. Committee Chairman Guy Hobbs says no one wants higher taxes, but says something has to be done if services are to stay at their current levels. We identified that there's a need and if, if it's not that source of revenue, it's going to have to be some other source of revenue or there are going to have to be cuts in the state budget. That's what the legislature is going to be facing. The report will be given to Governor Kenny Gwynn on Friday and then the state legislature will pick it apart starting next year when they convene. So we won't have any final decisions on tax increases for months. Back to you. And Dana, in the meantime, there's going to be a lot of talk about these tax proposals. Three members of the governor's committee will meet with the Las Vegas Chamber of Commerce tomorrow. There's expected to be a lot of questions from the business community. So is it a deal or just another delaying tactic? That's the question world leaders are asking tonight after Saddam Hussein announced this morning that he will agree to new weapons inspections in Iraq. The White House says Saddam never had a choice. And President Bush is warning the Iraqi leader if he is deceiving the world again, he's asking for war. Saddam Hussein didn't wait until the Friday deadline to make his move. Today, he sent the message through his UN ambassador that Iraq will allow United Nations weapons inspectors back in. We are prepared to receive the, inter the inspectors within the assigned timetable. We are eager to see them perform their duties. Eager? Why? If Saddam has invested billions in secret super weapons programs. Because Iraq's ambassador insists the weapons are all gone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Iraq is clean, yes. Yes. That is not what the UN team said when they left in 98. And since then, U.S. intelligence has identified 800 suspected super weapon sites. The White House spokesman, in effect, calls Saddam a liar. We know that he, had, that he possesses chemical and biological weapons, and we know that he seeks to acquire nuclear weapons. The Security Council resolution requires Iraq to turn over the details of every weapons program. And when inspectors go in next month, they'll have new gear to uncover any cheating. Higher resolution satellite cameras than in 98. Earth penetrating radar to find buried tunnels and bunkers. Better sensors to detect germs, chemicals, and radiation. And President Bush, who today thanked Secretary General Kofi Annan for strong U.N. action on Iraq, 
warned earlier that any cheating could trigger war. Zero tolerance is about as plain as I can make it. We will not tolerate any deception, denial, or deceit, period. So Iraq now has until December 8th to declare all of its chemical, biological, and nuclear programs. Inspectors will begin their work on December 23rd, and they're required to report back to the U.N. Security Council 60 days later. Here at home, there are fears that a military strike against Iraq could trigger a new round of terrorist attacks. A new audio tape reportedly made by Osama bin Laden has congressional leaders working to approve the new Department of Homeland Security. The voice on the tape threatens retaliation if the U.S. attacks Iraq. Many analysts say we should take it seriously. Osama bin Laden does not issue these kinds of threats idly. He, he does not engage in rhetorical flourish. Every time he has made a direct threat, he has followed through. Meantime, work continues on new baggage screening security at America's airports. The nation's transportation security chief says more than 90 percent of airports will meet the New Year's deadline to start checking all bags. Right now, it's not known whether McCarran Airport will make that deadline. He said his gambling habit drove him to the other side of the law, and now a former Metro detective is going to prison. Today, a judge sentenced Jack Brandon to serve two to ten years behind bars. Back in February, Brandon squirted two United Coin employees with pepper spray and robbed them outside Ray's Lounge in Henderson. But detectives had already been suspicious of Brandon. They put a tracking device on his car and used that to catch him. Brandon will begin his sentence immediately. He'll also have to pay back more than $16,000 he took in that robbery. A Crime Tracker 3 alert tonight. We now have a sketch of a man wanted for kidnapping a little girl outside her Las Vegas home last weekend. Here's the picture. The suspect has salt and pepper colored hair with a receding hairline. He's about 5 foot 9, 170 pounds. Witnesses told police the man grabbed the girl in a neighborhood behind the stratosphere near Sahara and Las Vegas Boulevard. She was found about a block away. Police say the man escaped on a black bicycle. Detectives need your help to catch the suspect before he hurts anyone else. If you have any more information, call police or Crime Stoppers at 385-5555. Some families already struggling with loved ones in nursing homes are now learning the places paid to take care of their parents, grandparents, or spouses are not doing a good job. The government just released results on 17,000 nursing homes, giving people a chance to see how their center compares to others. And now some Las Vegans are using that information to make sure the people they love get the care they deserve. Stacey Escalante joins us live from the News 3 Internet Center with more on this. And Stacey, this information is being released for the first time just this week, but already some locals are using it to make decisions. Jim, one administrator I spoke with said he received dozens of calls today Two different people I spoke with today said they heard about it in the news and in the paper. This is where you go for the information, Medicare.gov, and you can get information on 23 different nursing homes in Clark County. Some people say it's scary, but it's good to know. Right. This is Bill, and this is Bill, too. Besides their names, they have another thing in common. Both of their wives live in nursing homes. We've been trying to keep it alive for eight months now, so... Pretty important. I've had her for 54 years, so she's pretty important, and I would like to get her out of there and take her home again. <laughs> for now, Bill Edwards' wife has to stay here. That's why Medicare.gov is important. It features new quality measures for nursing homes. He can find his wife's home and see how it compares to the national average. I was a little disturbed because I didn't think that and they got a very good score uh, in most cases. But before he panics and pulls her out, Bill's going to ask questions. I want to ask if they can improve on some of those weak sides that they have. Nancy Whitman says that's exactly what the quality measures are for, so people can get educated and get answers to questions. The um, results in um, Nursing Home Compare on Medicare's website say that you have a high percentage of um, bed sores. What are you doing about that? Why is the percentage high? Whitman works for Health Insight, a company that will help nursing homes improve their quality of care. She believes home administrators will be held to a higher standard now that the public is armed with more information. Both bills agree the information is important to them. Because I want to know, I, I don't want to get into one and then find out right away that they're not uh, caring for her in a proper fashion. Why? Because if you got people that you care about, they, they abuse them. So you got to get them in a good place. 
One local administrator told me over the phone it's not a bad idea. He just hopes people don't panic and misinterpret the numbers. For example, one area deals with residents with bed sores, but it doesn't decipher those residents who were admitted with bed sores and those of them who developed them at the nursing home. They say that's why it's very important for people to ask questions. Reporting from the newsroom, I'm Stacy Escalante. Back to you, Jim. Great advice, Stacy. Thank you. We've made it easy for you to find that Medicare web, website. We have set up a link. Just go to kvbc.com, click on links. You can also call 1-800-MEDICARE for more information. Most agree there's a lot of cash in the Silver State, but according to a new report, many here are keeping it for themselves. Charity events like this Make-A-Wish run do wonders in raising money for local charities. But according to a generosity index, Nevadans are losing the race on a national level. The state ranks 40th in the country when it comes to donating money to charities. Working with Rotary and then also the Las Vegas affiliate of the Susan G. Komen Breast Cancer Foundation, we're finding that the money is maybe a little bit tighter than we would like. The Boston-based company, which published the results of the Generosity Index, says the index measures charitable deductions from individual tax returns and data published by the IRS. If your TV is still working, consider yourself lucky. Some people in town are without power right now. Tom Hawley's above the outage at DI and Valley View. Yeah, the people watching us in that area are probably using the hand crank generator because the signals are out in this area as well as power throughout the neighborhood. You aren't going to really see a whole lot of what's going on right now. Uh, you are going to find signals out at the intersection of Arville and uh, Desert Inn, also at uh, Desert Inn and Valley View. And that's where you have the really big backup here where motors are going through. But guess, but gosh, just uh, one at a time as uh, conditions dictate. You can also see that uh, traffic is a little bit better on Spring Mountain Road. You do have lights over there. That's the best alternate route. We don't have any word on exactly what has caused this power outage yet. Looks like it's affecting about, oh, a four square block area that's bounded on, roughly by Desert Inn on the south and Cirrus on the north, or perhaps Penwood on the north, Decatur on the west side, Valley View on the east side. It's mostly a resident, or rather an industrial area. Shouldn't affect a whole lot of residential customers. Tom Holling reporting from Sky 3. All right, thank you, Tom. There could be big changes coming down the road for teenage drivers. Putting restrictions on when young people drive and who they drive with will likely be a hot topic at the upcoming legislative session. Kids First reporter Kendall Tenney joins us now with more. The National Transportation Safety Board has already recommended graduated licenses for the state of Nevada. That would limit the number of passengers a 16-year-old driver can carry. But a panel of concerned citizens wants to do more. A number of high-profile teen accidents like this one that killed two girls earlier this year is what sparked the interest. Now, local law enforcement personnel, along with parents, stop DUI, driving instructors, all sorts of folks are coming together to see what can be done to make teen drivers better drivers. They say education and training need to be improved. We've got 31 high schools here in the Las Vegas Valley and only six high schools teach driver's ed. When I went to school, you know, that was part of the curriculum, both the classroom and behind the wheel. We don't have that anymore. The group is holding a series of meetings in preparation for the 2003 legislative session. Many of their ideas could someday become law. Nina and Jim. All right, thank you, Kendall. How's this for a strange story? A man rescues a little girl trapped in a washing machine. That story is coming up, plus a miracle surgery that could give you perfect vision. Probably will be approved in a very short period of time, and then it doesn't. I think it's frustrating for both doctors as well as patients. The technology is here, but you need to go south of the border for the actual surgery. Find out why in a special Healthline 3 report. Plus, a disturbing crime may have you thinking twice about who you hire to clean your home. You could see her going through things. She went through drawers. She went through a jewelry box. And Harry Potter fans are trying to get their hands on a stolen copy of the new movie. But is it the real thing? Those stories and more coming up on News 3, where news comes first. You're watching Southern Nevada's number one choice for news. This is News 3 at 5. If you're getting older and suddenly you're reaching for glasses to read, you're not alone. Now, almost 90 million Americans suffer from presbyopia, and a number of them are traveling great distances now for a new surgical cure. Helpline 3's Beth Fisher is here with more. Well, I know a lot of seniors are out there thinking there's no cure for aging eyes. Well, there is, but very few people know about it. 
In tonight's Healthline 3, we focus on this surgery that could change your life. Freedom and being able to go any place and picking something up and being able to read it. Because I even have trouble in uh, grocery stores or department stores, clothes, I can't see the, the price on the ticket unless I have my glasses on. Bobby Teru has spent the past 15 years slowly watching her near vision blur. It was all over the news. Right here, I can have, it's all blurry. It's a problem for millions of Americans, a problem San Diego Dr. Robert Rosen says he can fix. Bobby is at 2200, which is that line? Yes. And? Tomorrow she'll be down here, 2030. Dr. Rosen says he's the first surgeon in North America to perform LAPR, laser-assisted presbyopia reversal. And we're going to do two little relaxing incisions in each of four quadrants like this. And what it's going to do, it's going to create more space there. Bobby is patient number 20. All 20 Dr. Rosen has done in Tijuana, Mexico. This American surgeon is driving his patients across the border where LAPR is legal. And one or two. And that is frustrating for this man, Las Vegas doctor John Seams, one of the few U.S. surgeons with the laser, collecting dust, waiting on FDA approval. When you keep hearing that it probably will be approved in a very short period of time and then it doesn't, I think it's frustrating for both doctors as well as patients. Once the FDA approves clinical trials for the laser in the U.S., Dr. Seams and six other U.S. surgeons will only be allowed to do 50 patients and then more waiting on the FDA. It's going to be probably a year or a year and a half before we can proceed to the second phase of the trial. Rather than waiting that long, more American patients will go here to Tijuana. Dr. Rosen admits he has a geographical advantage with easy access to another country. I think it's good that we do trials, uh, but if the trials have been done in other countries like Europe or other places that we respect the science, I don't think that you necessarily need to have two to three years to do it in the United States. The following morning, doctors came from all over the San Diego area to see the outcome of this breakthrough surgery. And since her surface is not smooth because of the swelling, uh, her vision will come in and out as she blinks or as we put tears in. That'll get better every day. But even with swelling, less than 24 hours after surgery, Bobby can make out tiny letters she hasn't been able to see in years. Would you at this point, just hours after surgery, recommend this to someone? Yes, I definitely would. Really? Yes. Why? It's just so exciting to be able to see again. And it was not painful. The procedure was, uh, I don't know how, but how it explained it, but it, it was effortless. Now again, this is not the laser eye surgery you hear everybody getting to fix their distance vision. This is the first realistic uh, cure for presbyopia. Bobby's swelling and vision continued to improve every day after surgery, and now she can read without any problem. Dr. Rosen expects to do thousands of Americans south of the border in the next few years, while his U.S. colleagues have their hands tied by the FDA. And I just spoke with the CEO of Surgilite, the company that makes the laser. She told me she anticipates FDA approval for those clinical trials in the U.S. sometime next month. But again, Nina and Jim, it will be years before most Americans can benefit from a procedure already being used in Europe, Canada, and Mexico. Jim? Interesting. All right. Thank you, Beth. If FDA approval does come next month, again, the deal is 50 Las Vegans will be able to have the surgery done. If you would like to be one of them, you should contact Dr. John Seams. Harry Potter fans who can't wait until Friday are flocking to the internet to get their hands on a copy of the new movie. A search conducted by the Associated Press found files that claim to be the new film have been downloaded more than 500 times from a website based in Europe. The film's producer, Warner Brothers, says reports of bootleg copies haven't been confirmed, but they have contacted authorities. 
Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets opens in theaters on Friday. No need to get bootleg copies of Dr. Jim's forecast. We give it to you free right here every night. Oh, um, enjoying that beautiful weather outside. I was up at Red Rock with the new dog. Oh, yes. <laughs> Have to talk about the new dog. You of know. course. Yes, You're a proud that. mama. Yeah, I am. A uh, little trail run out there. It was perfect weather. Yeah, I spent half the day today trying to figure out all the words I could use to describe today's yeah. weather. Perfect. That's beautiful, a good one. Beautiful. Spectacular. Fantastic. Gorgeous. Get your fabulous. thesaurus out. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Going. Seriously, it's been that nice. And I think we're going to see more of that to come as we look from our Rio Cam. The sun has gone down. The lights of the city are doing their thing. And it'll be a cool evening tonight, but nothing unusually cool. Right now, we're looking at 67 degrees under cl with clear skies. East winds at 5 miles an hour. Barometric pressure is lower today than it was yesterday, but 30.05 is still considered on the high side. And yes, more high pressure in store for us, and that typically means good things in the weather. Here's a live look at our Wells Fargo weather net stations here in the valley in 60s for the most part. Nellis and Harris still 71 degrees. The winds all very light right now, looking real good. But it is going to be a cool evening. Now, as far as the rest of the southern part of southern Nevada, we're all still dealing with some good temperatures. 70 Mesquite, 74 Lake Mead, 76 in Laughlin, 60s for Overton and Boulder City, 60s also in Pahrump. Mount Charleston, 33 degrees right now. That's our cool spot, and uh, it's going to be a cold one before the night is through there. On the national picture, at least the major storms are gone from the east, so no more tornadoes right now. But what they're dealing with is some very arctic air pushing its way on in behind that. So they had the storms. They're still trying to clean up for lots of folks in Alabama, Tennessee, Ohio. And now they're dealing with some very cold weather as well. Now for us out here to the west, we do have this frontal system that's just racing off to the east. It pretty much missed us completely. High pressure is going to help nudge that thing away. There's another storm system at the Pacific Northwest. It's not going to come down here at all. Again, our high pressure ridge will push it away. 30s right now for Minneapolis uh, to Bismarck. 50s for Seattle and Portland. 61 in Kansas City. That's not so bad. 55 in New Orleans. 48 in New, in New York. And we're looking at uh, overall good things for us in the West. That high pressure is really the story. We will see our winds from the north uh, for the next day or so. And uh, that will just keep the temperatures moderated just a little bit. But overall, Another great day as far as the weather goes for tomorrow. So on the fly-by forecast then, we're going to drop down into the 20s tonight from Mount Charleston. 50 for the high temperature tomorrow. North winds 5 to 15 miles an hour. Out of Lake Mead, a gorgeous day. A little wind picking up at times, but I still think it'd be a nice day to be on the lake with a high temperature near 76 degrees. And here in Las Vegas tonight, skies will be clear. Cool. 48 are low. 70 the high temperature tomorrow. Your five-day forecast, we're going to go into the 60s after tomorrow, but that is still real nice even for this time of year. A few more clouds by the end of the weekend. Everything's looking great. Jim and Nina, back to you. Thank you, sir. Just ahead, a reminder that you should be careful who you hire to work in your home. Plus, a young girl has a close call with a washing machine. We'll explain next on News 3, where news comes first. She was supposed to be cleaning up, but one woman was caught cleaning out her clients' homes on tape. Take a look. Police say this maid in Port St. Lucie, Florida, tried to make off with jewelry, money, and prescription drugs. People who live at one condo complex suspected she might be stealing from them, so they teamed up with the sheriff's office and set up surveillance, and here's what they caught on tape. Detectives say when they confronted the woman, she admitted to taking the items, and she did return them. Tonight, the maid is being held on a $65,000 bond. A California man is being called a hero after saving a young girl who was trapped in a washing machine. The man was passing by the laundromat when he, when he saw what was happening. The door was jammed and the machine was filling with water. Firefighters say what happened next was nothing short of heroic. He was thinking, went out, picked up a tire wrench, came back and actually broke the glass, pulled the uh, little girl out to safety. Authorities don't know how the girl got trapped in the washer, but they don't think she got there as a result of foul play. Still ahead, one unlucky skunk should have known not to stick his nose where it didn't belong. Watch him try to get out next on News 3, where news comes first. All right, here we go. It's skunk time. The last thing you want to do is get up close and personal with one of these animals. But somebody had to step in and save this little guy. After he got, a, that's a yogurt cup stuck on his head. Despite endless attempts to paw the cup off, the skunk needed some help from the experts. So, animal control to the rescue. They helped get the skunk out. 
while being very careful not to scare him to avoid what could have been a very smelly situation. Thanks for having us in tonight. Nightly News with Tom Brokaw is up next. See you back here at 6 o'clock. Good night.